like to welcome you all to worship on this lovely Lord's Day. We thank the Lord for the wonderful weather we are experiencing. A couple of announcements. Um, we continue to collect food for our Pilot High um, to End Hunger project. So far we have 135 feet of food. Our challenge was 46 feet a week. So far we are managing an average of 45 a week. So keep bringing that food in folks. Uh, it will certainly help those who are hungry. On Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. we have a Zoom gathering uh, to study and discuss how we can end hunger. And our Pile High project is helping to end hunger even if it's one person at a time. We can't end world hunger overnight, but we can help our neighbor next door. So I want to thank you for uh, your generosity in donating food and also invite you, even though it's now week three or four, uh, I think it's the fourth week of Lent or in Lent, uh, ask you to join us uh, for our discussion time. Also, uh, Christ in our homes, our daily devotionals is available for the next three months. Uh, if you would like those, just let the office know or next Sunday as you come through um, and pick up your bulletin, ask for a devotional as well. Um, okay, so I understand that the stimulus checks are going out imminently. And uh, you might have read in the Mandarin Messenger the message from the stewardship team asking you to consider giving a tithe of that over and above your normal giving uh, to the church to help us. Um, if you feel led by God to do that, we would appreciate it very much. I know that some people actually really need the stimulus check. So we ask that if you feel led by God, at least give us a little offering out of it. And that would greatly help uh, our, our deficit in our budget, in our spending plan, in our mission plan, whichever terminology you want to use there. But we like to think of it as not a budget, but a mission plan where everything we do is a mission. We are a church. We are on the mission for Jesus Christ. And sometimes that takes money to do. So please help us with that. Um, you might also have seen our Holy Week schedule. Monday Thursday is on April 1st. And no, it's not April Fool's Day that uh, we decided to go with uh, in-person. That's really w w uh, happening. We are going to have in-person worship for the first time on April 1st at our Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. And then on Good Friday, also at 7 p.m., we are having a Tenebrae service in person. On Easter, we will be having a sunrise service in this area at 7 a.m. Hopefully the weather is good and we can have chairs out, uh, spread out wide enough, but that we can gather outdoors and not have to sit in our cars uh, and be able to just worship together, seeing each other's faces. So join us for that. If you can't, if that's too early, we will be having in-person Easter service or services. Today, council meets at noon, so please pray for us as we discern what is best for the congregation. And we will be determining the time or times for that service. So uh, just put all of that on your calendars and uh, just keep us all in prayer as we start making plans to move indoors uh, once again. We now continue with our prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. of living water pour out your mercy over us our sin is heavy and we long to be free rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn wash us in your cleansing flood make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love amen beloved God's word never fails the promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no water, there is no food, and we te detest the miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, 
make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made the serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of, of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the glory, great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with in the ages and raised him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. So I have a Gmail account, and Google sends me every so often what they call the word genius. It's a word for the day. And it's an obscure word, one that we don't use in everyday language. And then they give you the meaning of it. Well, I think my IQ might have gone up a few points because I did learn the meaning of some words that I'd never heard of before. So today we're gonna do a little bit of word genius. Here are the words for the day. Love, Grace, faith, love, good works. OK, 
Okay, so I'm not like word genius where I'm just going to give you the definition of it. So I'm just going to tell you a story. So, once upon a time, and it's not a fairy tale, this is a true story. There was a man, a monk actually, who really struggled with his spiritual life. He thought that he had to confess his sins in order to be saved. And so he would go to his mentor and confessor and he would confess his sins and then he would get up and walk away after being absolved. And then he would remember another sin or he would ask himself, is there a sin that I'm not aware of? And again, he would run back into the confession booth and he would go and confess. Sometimes up to six hours a day. Yes, that is Martin Luther. Martin Luther struggled with salvation. Until one day, his confessor told him, Martin, look to the cross. He kept telling him that. Look to the cross. And one day Martin Luther sat down and he read the Bible again. And he read this passage in Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved. By faith through Jesus Christ. And in Christ for good works. So yeah, that's where I got my words from for our little word genius uh, moment today. So I'm going to look at these words. What do they mean? Love. I think we all understand love to some degree, right? But the love that we're talking about here today, the love of God, in this passage calls it a great love with which God has loved us. It's not just regular love. This is love that was nailed to the cross and the blood poured out for us. This is how God demonstrated God's love for us by pouring out his blood for us on the cross, for giving up his life for us on the cross. So that brings us to grace. There was a pastor who rented a car. He had the car for 24 hours. He had to have it back by the end of the 24th hour. And as he was driving back to return the rental car, he was stuck in traffic. So he arrived at the rental place 58 minutes late. Well, he assumed he would have to pay for the extra time. So as he walked in, he put the keys down on the counter and asked the woman behind the counter, how much do I owe? And she looked up and she said, nothing. And he went, but I'm late. And she said, yes, but you have a one hour grace period. And he thought about this for a minute. Being a good pastor, you know there's a sermon in every moment. And so he thought about this and he said, but what is grace? A little taken aback, the woman hesitated and she went, well, I don't really know. But I think it means that even though you're supposed to pay, you don't have to. Maybe that's one of the best definitions of grace that I've heard in a long time. Even though we were supposed to pay and are supposed to pay for our sins, we don't have to because of the love that was poured out on the cross, because Jesus willingly gave his life for us. He died in our place. He paid the price for us. That is grace. 
I want to use another illustration for grace. Hey, Sandy. Here, you can stay seated. Okay, thank you. I have $20 here. Would you like $20? Sure. Okay, Sandy, I'm going to rephrase this. Here's $20 for you. Would you like it? I guess Sandy doesn't get it yet, so I'm going to just rephrase that. So, uh, Sandy, this $20 is for you. Maybe you need to do something and so other than say, yes, you want it. Sandy did nothing to deserve that $20, right? It's a gift. You see, the thing is, before we don't have the benefit of that gift, if we don't receive it, if we don't accept it, until Sandy reached out her hand to receive the gift, it would have been of no benefit to her. As a matter of fact, after three times of asking Sandy if she wanted the $20 and she still didn't take it, I would have gladly just put it back in my pocket. But you see, God doesn't give up on us that easily. God keeps sending the Holy Spirit time and time again to bring us to the point where we will accept the gift of grace. So that brings me to the next word in our word genius today. And that's faith. What is faith? Faith, I believe, is simply believing that that gift is for you, trusting God's promise of life in Christ Jesus, and receiving it. One Sandy believed that I really did have the $20 for her. Once faith kicked in, she trusted that I was going to give it to her and that when she reached out, I wasn't going to take it back. That's faith. Faith is simply trusting God and the promises of God. Grace and faith together, my friends, are the keys to our salvation. But you know, just like I had to prompt Sandy a little bit to receive the gift, God does that for us too. You see, even our faith is not our own work. We don't decide one day, oh, I, know, I wake up this morning, now I have faith in God. No, it is the work of God through the Holy Spirit in us day after day, drawing us always closer to God, bringing us to a point where we can have faith. Paul tells us that we have all been given a measure of faith. The thing that we have to do is to use that faith to trust God, to trust in the promises of God. And then that brings me back to love. And this isn't now God's love. This is our love, our response to God for the great love with which God loves us. And in response to that, we are like what my one friend says when I, when I talk to her on the phone and I hang up and I before I hang up I say to her I love you and her response to me is I love you back I love you back God you loved us so much that you gave your only son that all we can do in response is to love you back and the thing is how do we love God back we love God back by showing our neighbor, showing God's love to our neighbor. We love God back by doing 
the things for the ones that God loves. So yeah, you all know that Rob and I are just engaged. Well, no, we've been engaged for almost a year. But in this year, uh, I have found that I like to do things for him that makes him happy, right? I think we do all do that for the person we love. We like to do things for the person that makes him or her happy. Well, that's the relationship that we should have with God too. We like to do things for God that we know will make God happy, will make God proud of us, will make God say at the end of the day, well done, my good and faithful servant. And those things that make God happy are when we serve our neighbor, when we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So Bob Musikowski, and I probably massacred that name, moved to Chicago and landed up in a working class neighborhood near the infamous Cabrini Green housing project. As he drove through that neighborhood one day, he saw an abandoned lot that had some um, old back stops in the back of it and he thought to himself that would make a great baseball field so he got together with some of the neighbors of that area and he established a little league when people asked him well why are you working so hard to doing this guess what his response was well i read this old book that i came across it's called the Bible. And in the Bible, it said that I should love my neighbor as myself. So I figured that these are my neighbors and they could use a little help and fun in their lives. That's why I did it. Well, he continued working hard and eventually established three little leagues together with the neighbors. And each of the restored baseball parks became not just a youth center, but actually a social hub for those neighborhoods. And one day he was asked again, why are you working so relentlessly on these projects? And he had newspaper interviews and they called him a social reformer, but he shunned that title. He would not accept the, to the, the, the title as a social reformer. When he was asked about it, he said, I am not a social reformer. All I'm doing is being a good neighbor. My friends, good works don't make you a good person. However, a good person does good works. Paul tells us in Ephesians that this is what we were created for in Christ Jesus to do good works. So, you know, you want to know how to live a Christian life? I've got a nice formula here for you. Okay? The formula for Christian living is, first of all, don't keep it a secret, okay? I'm gonna tell you, but it's not a secret. You have to go and proclaim it to everyone. The formula is, we are saved by the grace of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to go out into the world and share this good news in both words and actions. That's it. Amen.
your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Cheer us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry and without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn especially. Our country, as we seek to move from division to unity, all who are suffering from COVID-19 and for their caregivers and for all families who have lost loved ones due to COVID, especially the family and friends of Dick Detheridge. All medical professionals, especially Allie, Mallory, Edson, Meredith, and Troy. All of our church leaders, especially Bishop Eaton, Bishop Suarez, and our synod staff. Our congregation leadership as they continue to seek God's will for our congregation. All victims of violence, prejudice, and injustice, and all families who have lost loved ones due to violence and prejudice. All members of our congregation that we remain healthy during this difficult time. All those recovering from surgery, including Martha and Barbara. All those suffering from cancer and other medical conditions, including Leon Owens, Chuck Swain, Don Conway, Barb Smith, Becky Watson, Alex and Elsa Grove, Sharon Fisher, Betty Sand, John Gisick, Roy Miller, Anna Kalen, Johnny Corco, Louis Lizzie, Dustin Darby, Fred Schober, and Suzanne. All those who are grieving the death of their loved ones, especially the families of and friends of Christine Borjali, Cami Smedley, and Julius Zephyr. All those who need encouragement and your healing presence, especially Kelly Susson, Jesse Emily, Marge Case, Bob Lee, Katie, Ron Smith, Jerry Buckingham, Ron Spencer, Richard Langston Sr., Ishmael Gomez, Merida Borjali, Cindy, Kim, Kelly, and Dave, June and Tom Elford, Sue, Greg, and Philip, Mark Nelson, Cindy Ingenito, Melanie Duras, all those who are homebound due to COVID or other causes, especially Betty Berzik, David Keister, Miss Charlotte, Robin Talbot and those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. By grace, we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace that we show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We trust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Ask at this time that the ashes please uh, get ready to receive the offering. Once again, we want to just thank you all for your faithfulness and your giving in both our monetary uh, offerings as well as your times and gifts during the week to help us prepare for our worship services and other ministries that we do.
to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become our own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the world from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit, our Advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom, to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Thank
Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, you are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.